is section 4.2, and it's on the uh, binomial distribution. And a binomial variable is a discrete variable that has two possible outcomes and maintains the same probability each time you go through the experiment. So uh, let's answer these questions if the following. Uh, first, we need to know if they're discrete or not. Uh, and then next, if they are discrete, are they binomial? Okay, the first one, if you flip 10 coins, how many land heads? Well, you can't have two and a half land heads, so it's definitely discrete. And it's also binomial because each time you flip that coin, uh, it's set up that there's only two possibilities, either heads or tails. And each time you do it, the probability of getting a head is the same, 50%. So that's definitely binomial. Uh, you take three tests, how long did it take? Uh, how long did they take? Uh, that's not even discrete because uh, it could take a fraction of an hour, a fraction of a minute or whatever, so that's not even discrete. You plant five trees, how many live? Well, that's discrete because either one, two, three, four, five, or none of them uh, live, so that's discrete. And is it binomial? Yes, because they either live or they die. Uh, you roll a die, what number does it show? It's discrete because the die could show 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, but it's not binomial, not the way it's worded, because it says what number does it show, and that's six different uh, possibilities there. Um, the next one says, you roll a die, does it land odd or even? Well, that's uh, discrete because it's either odd or even. Uh, there's no half odd or anything like that, and it's binomial because there's only two possibilities, and uh, the probability that it lands odd is one half, and the probability that it lands even is one half, um, because uh, the one, three, and five are odd, and the two, four, and six are even on a die, and it maintains the same probability each time you roll that die. Uh, let's see, you roll 20 dice, uh, how many end up showing as six? Well, that's discrete because either it shows a six or it doesn't, and it's also binomial for the same reason. It either shows a six or it doesn't. There are two outcomes the way this is worded. It either shows a six or it doesn't show a six. Now, the probability that it shows a six is one out of six, and the probability that it doesn't show a six is five out of six, but that's fine because there's only two possibilities on this. It either shows a six or it doesn't, and each time you roll a die, it maintains the same probability of showing that six. Okay, on this one, you draw a card from a deck of 52 cards. A person guesses the card. The card is then replaced, and the person does it again. Uh, this is discrete because what's going on here, you either guess the card right or wrong, and for the same idea that's binomial, there's only two possibilities, right or wrong. But it also has to maintain the same probability each time you go through this. And since the person replaced uh, the card back in, the probability that you guess that card correctly is the same each time you go through it. Now on this next problem, it says uh, you draw a card from a deck of 52 cards, the person gets the card, and the card is not replaced, and the person does it again. Well, when the card is not replaced, the probability that you guess that card correctly has decreased now to 1 out of 51, especially if the person shows you what card you uh, you guessed either correct or incorrect the previous time. So the first time that you guess the card, your chances of guessing it right is, one out, is uh, 1 out of 52, but the next time you're probability of guessing it correctly is 1 out of 51, so that would not be binomial. Okay, once you um, see a problem and you identify it as being binomial or not, you need to label the N, X, Y, P, and Q. A lot of books just say the N, the X, P, and Q, but uh, we're going X and Y because we're breaking it up into the lower number of successes and the upper number of successes for X and Y. Now, if it just says the probability that, let's say, you flip 10 coins and what's the probability that five land heads, then that means exactly five, so both the X and the Y would be five. Let's go ahead and do one here. It says uh, these can be done on the binomial sheet. We'll go to that here in a second. You flip 10 coins, what is the probability that 5 end up heads? Well, it's not 5 out of 10, because think of it this way. If you thought that the probability of getting 5 heads on 10 coins was 5 out of 10, then I guess you think that the probability of getting 10 heads on 10 coins would be 10 out of 10 or 100%. So you know that's definitely not right. Um, now on this, you're, you, how many trials do you have? How many times are you going to do this? Well, you're going to flip this coin 10 times, okay? Or you can say you flip... Uh, 10 coins. Either way, the n is 10. 
Now, how many successes are you looking for? Five. So both the lower and the upper number of successes is five. So both the X and Y is five. And then P is the probability of a success, of a success, just a success. We don't need to put down here for P what the probability of getting five heads on ten coins is. We're just putting down what's the probability of getting a head on a coin, and that would be 0.5. Now, you actually don't need Q uh, when you put this into Excel, but Q is equal to 1 minus P, 1 minus the probability of a success, which in this problem would be also 0.5. So you just go to your binomial sheet, which I'm on. You put in your number of trials right here, 10. Lower number of success is 5, upper number of success is 5, and the probability of a, of a success, which is 0.5. And there's your probability right there, 0.246. So about a 24.6% chance that if you flip 10 coins, 5 are going to land heads. It also tells you the expected number of heads right here. That's actually calculated by just doing n times p. Even if I had these gone, the x and the y, it still gives me the expected value or uh, the mean, the average number of heads. Uh, now, in our problem, we had uh, five in both of those, but it also gives you the standard deviation. Uh, the expected value uh, is just n times p is all you do to get that. 10 times 0.5 is 5. To get the uh, variance, let's go to that next, you take n times p times q. 10 times 0.5 is 5. If p is 0.5, q is 0.5. So that's be 10 times 0.5 times 0.5, which is 2.5. And the standard deviation is the square root of your variance, which would give you 1.58. And then here uh, to the right of the binomial distribution is a graph that shows the probability of each thing. Like here's the probability of zero heads, one head, two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads. You see five heads has the highest probability of occurring here, almost a 25% chance. So let's go ahead and go on to uh, the next problem. This next problem says what is the probability that at least five out of the 10 coins end up heads. Well, if you're saying at least five, that means five or more. So the lower number of successes is five, and the upper number of successes is 10, and there's your probability right there. Uh, on the next one, it says you flip uh, 10 coins, what is the probability to, that you uh, that at most three end up heads? Well, at most three means three or less, so that would be clear down to zero, and as high as three. And that would be your probability right there of that occurring, 0.17188. Now, if it says less than three, make sure that the higher number that you put in is two. Okay, so, or if it says greater than five, make sure you say six to 10. So that it's specific, it matters. Um, if it means it says greater than or equal to five, then five is in there. If it says greater than five, you'd have to go to six. And then finally, the toughest one here uh, says three out of four dentists recommend Trident to the patients that chew gum. From a sample of 50 dentists, what's the probability that at least 60% of them will recommend Trident to the patients that chew gum? Well, we've got a sample of 50. My least number of successes is at least 60% of them. 60% of how many? 60% of 50. And 0.6 times 50 is 30. And we want at least that many, so that could be 30 clear up to 50. Your P is the probability that a uh, dentist recommends Trident, which is 3 out of 4. So you would just put those uh, values in here. It was, uh, let's see, how many dentists did we sample? I think it was 50. And at least 60% of them. So I'm going to do equals 0.6 times 50. And I get 30, and it said at least that many, so I could have clear up to all 50 of them recommend tried in. And my probability here is 3 fourths, so I can either type in uh, 0.75 or type in equals 3 fourths, or this is set up that you can just type in 3 fourths, and it knows it's going to be a decimal. And here's your answer. So there's at least a 99.374% chance that they're going to. Uh, uh, that at least 30 dentists are going to recommend Trident gum. And you can see the average number of uh, dentists that would recommend Trident gum is 37.5. Here's your standard deviation, here's your variance. And the uh, distribution looks like this. And you'll find out soon that in Chapter 5 that this is approximately normal, a bell-shaped curve. When you get a curve like that, that's approximately normal. And it actually runs a test right here to see if it's approximately normal. So that will do it with that section. And uh, we'll uh, pick it up uh, with a practice test.